Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom to call Yisrael this beautiful Shabbat. Hallelujah. The teaching, the message, the preaching that Yah has gave us this morning, Yisrael. Yeah. Just to somewhat, I don't want to jump the gun, but just to somewhat give this a title if I would, I want to talk about a fin. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, it's something we as a people, we hear truth, we hear message like we heard this morning. And we're offended. Well, you can go to hell with your offense when it comes to the Torah of Yah. Yeah. And what someone got me on this, looking at it somewhat this morning, not because I didn't have a message prepared, but because uh, what I've been looking at, I'm just not ready for it just yet. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not ready for it just yet. And what, what does that mean? Well, when I get up here with it, I may not be ready, but I'll be ready, Israel. Yeah. But on the trip, the excursion that we took the other day uh, to ride the transit, the train station, uh, Zakane Dawid rode with us. Hallelujah. We all know Zakane Dawid. You know, during the trip, I would look over his expression, somewhat uh, unexpressive, if I may use that term. But yet, when we began to talk about Torah, you can see the lightning in his eye on the way back from the trip. And there were certain things we had discussed and talked about. And one of the things that he had mentioned was concerning uh, how many times we should forgive our ark. And expounded on that. And made, he made the statement 70 times 70. He said, that's a lot of times, I can't, is that not? And me and my, I somewhat pondered that. I didn't answer just right away. I somewhat pondered that. And you know, my mind and what I have learned through the teaching, through the wisdom of our Zakane, the teaching we have heard here, I begin to think about that. And really, in all honesty, that's not really that many times. It's not a lot, Yisrael. If Yah would, if that was the end of it, in other words, there's more to it than what, he, what was asked of Yahshua HaMashiach. There's more to it than that. So, I would told you all for the conversation because I began to look at that somewhat this morning, Zakane. Just a little here and a little there, just to bring something that will somewhat enlighten us all this morning. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with that, is it not? Come on, Yisrael, y'all. Yeah. But yet we're offended when, we, when the Torah is being spoken in truth. Correction. We're offended. We should not be offended when the Torah. Yeah. Come on, Yisrael, y'all. That is not what that statement, I will read it, was meant. Something that offends us. We're offended by the least little of things. Someone look at you wrong, we're offended. Someone do a minuscule little thing, we're offended. We don't like that, we're offended. But yet we don't think at how we offend Almighty Yah. We're how we offended Yahshua. And we offend Yahshua continuously, Yisrael Yah. One of the main points as I get into this teaching, it's more than just the offense, but there has to be always an offering. There has to be an offering. So I, I tired of this on the top of my little papers here. Yeah. Offend, but the importance of the offering. That's all right. Hallelujah. Because we have offended Almighty Yah, Yisrael Yah. We have done things... That is unforgivable. Yes. It cannot be forgiven yes. without an offering. Yes. That's Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We offend our art. We offend our uh, hope. We forget. We forget. We yeah. offend our ish. Our ish. Yeah. And sometimes it takes a little, little more than the last time to make that amends. Yes. But yet it takes an offering. I fit my ish, y'all. Come on, baby. I'm sorry. Well, sometimes sorry doesn't do it. It takes a little more. Sometimes gifts, it just don't work all the time. Hallelujah. But it takes an offering, Israel. If you would, turn with me here. I will tell you this. Matiti, I would, this statement was made that Zakan and I was talking about. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. And I want you to ponder, Yisrael, not how one has offended you, but our offense towards a one. Just think about that. 
It's so easy for us to remember what one has done for us, but when we've done to someone, we, we forget that very easily. Oh, I haven't done that much. You're not being honest with yourself. Yes, we forget so easily what we've done, our trespasses, our sins. We had tried to offer the beaten path. Yes, we have missed Yahshua by, if I may use the proverbial, 10 miles, not just a mile, but by, by so far, Yisrael, y'all. Yet yeah, he forgives us. Yet the offering that we bring is not sustainable, what we, what we had to offer. But because he had offered himself, Yisrael, y'all. I, had this, I, I wanted to say that for the end, but I got something beautiful. The whole message is beautiful, but I want to expound upon something on the end that we may have a, a, a more of an understanding, Israel. Yah. But it says here in Matithia chapter 18, verse 21, Then came Kephar unto Yahshua and said, Rabbi, Master, Teacher, you, have, you are the Torah. You answered all things. How often shall my, op, my brother... Sin against me, and I forgive him. Till seven times. Now we must understand these men understood Torah. And he did not uh, say this in means of an ark stepping on my foot or saying you shouldn't do that. But he's talking about concerning the Torah. The offense of the Torah. Right. You know, we may do things one to another, yeah. but we must see what Torah has to say, Yisrael. Yeah. We cannot go by our emotions that we're disgruntled with one because of something so minuscule. Yeah. Beautiful. Or because of an expression. But we must see what Torah has to say about yeah. this forgiveness yeah. and this offense. How many times, Yahshua? And Yahshua makes this statement. It's a profound statement. I won't but just scratch the essence of what he says here. But Yahshua says unto them, I say to you. And it's not Torah said, and Yahshua said, no. He said this yes. out of his mouth. He said, I say to you, yes. Kepha, mm -hmm. unto seven times, but unto seventy times. Seven, 490 times. Yeah. As I came, was, you know, we was extraordinary about that, but it's more than just the 490 times. And I'm pretty sure that it threw Kefar for a loop as many times as we read this, it throws us for a loop, and we're like, wow, uh, uh, but what, yeah. what was he saying? It's more than just the number, Yisrael. Yeah. But he is saying that there must also be an appropriate yeah. offering yeah. that has to be brought. Not just any offering is enough, to get into that door, if I may say, of forgiveness or to be forgiven of Yisrael. When it comes to Yahweh, Yahshua, Hamashiach, we have not even come to the threshold of what is acceptable for the, the sins that we have committed as a people, Yisrael. But it takes the appropriate offering and it must be received. It must be accepted. It must be the one which is the one that is offended must receive that say, and say, okay, that is, that, that's, that's sufficient. All right. Okay. There are those that have left. There's those that have committed an atrocity of things to one and to the other. And the world and what has been teached and taught is that one said, okay, I'm sorry. And it should just be forgiven. That's not what Torah says. Hallelujah. That is not how it goes. It's not just that easy. Oh, I'm sorry, and then you do it again? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that you do it again. I'm sorry. I'm written. No, that's not, that's not what that means. That, that's not what Torah is saying here. Hallelujah. Let me step back a little bit and talk about our brother. Who is our ark? Who are our ahot? Yes. Is, it a, is it those that we meet out in the world? Those that, that trampled the, the Dhamma Yahshua under our feet? Are those the ones that we forgive? Do we have compassion upon the sinner, though that walk totally against the Torah? 
Yah has no compassion on those that transgress the Torah of Yahweh continuously, that, that blaspheme his name, Israel. Yah. I know there are those that have not come to the knowledge, Israel, Yah, but there are those that have been birthed for hell. And that's a totally different message in itself. That those that have given up the birth, the right to be made again or transformed to this new and living way by the washing of the Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach, by the pouring of the water of his Ruach HaKodesh, blaspheming the name, the precious name of Yahweh and, and what that means to him. Understanding the path, understanding the Torah, and saying to hell with you, Almighty Yahweh, that should never be forgiven, Yisrael Yah. We cannot do that, Yisrael Yah. So what is the essence of this? What does it mean to us, Yisrael Yah? We must understand who our, our hope are. It's those that we that sit amongst the house of Yisrael Yah. It's those that are striving for the same perfection. To meet the standard that Yahweh has laid in Yahshua HaMashiach. Those are our art and our hope. Yes, yes. So first of all, let's lay that straight. How often shall my art or my hope sin or trespass the Torah, the Mishpah? And how many times shall I forgive them? Turn with me to Marcus chapter 3 verse 31. I want to read this concerning Yahshua HaMashiach. At the gathering, the bridegroom, they had to have us be dressed a certain way. This, this banquet, Yisrael, there was a host of people there that recognized and have heard of Yahshua HaMashiach. They have seen him. It has been told, the gossip, the words going around, whose son this is. He lived amongst us as a boy. He has returned now, claiming to be the son of Almighty Yahweh. So they gathered at this place here. and It says in chapter 3, verse 31, There came then his brethren and his Ema, his mother, and standing without, sent to him. They were outside of the assembly, outside of the courts, calling him. And the multitude sat round about Yahshua HaMashiach and said unto him, Behold, your Ema, your mother, your brother, your Akim, are without, they seek for you. Yes, yes. Disturbing the whole thing. That was a disturbance amongst the congregation of those that was gathered there, Yisrael. So Yahshua, he says this, and he answered them saying, who is my Ema? Yes, come on, sir. Who is my mother? I don't know that woman. Who are my Ema? Who are my Ak? Who are my brethren? We must establish this amongst the house of Israel. Not everyone that we meet that says Yahshua is our Ak and our Ak hope. It's just the truth, Israel. Not all those that name the name have the surety of the Yasha and Yahshua HaMashiach. We must realize that, Yisrael. We must know our Akim. And, my, and how do we do that? How do we establish that? By their labors. By their expressions. As they walk according to the Mishra, according to the Torah, Yisrael. That's how we know who are our, our, our Akim and our, our, our Holt, our Hohim. So he said in verse 33, he answered them saying, who is my mother? Who is my brethren? And he looked round about the assembly of them which sat round about him and said, behold, my Ema. Behold, my brethren amongst the house, amongst the assembly. Those that are seeking the Torah, that are seeking to please Almighty Yahweh, that are looking for the doors into the Melchul and into the kingdom of Israel. Those whom we deem to be our, our, our brother, they're not looking, they're not seeking for the gates of the Shemayans to please Almighty Yahweh in all things. Yes, right, yeah. It is those, look what he says here in verse 35. But whosoever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter their size, 
their prestige. It doesn't matter if they are renowned. It doesn't matter the color of their, their skin. It doesn't matter, Yisrael. He says here, for whoso do the will of my Abba. Is that not what Yahshua come to do? They did not come to do the wills, okay? Those are your ah. Those are your hope. Those that do the will. Those that walk after the Torah. Those that are seeking to know more of the Torah, Yisrael. Those are your ah. Those are your a hope. He said, for whosoever, everyone that shall do the will of Almighty Yahweh, my Abba, the same is my ah. Yeah. The same is my sister yeah. and my ima. Yeah. You know, there are those, and I can speak from an experience that we deem to be blood relatives, cousins, yeah. brothers, sisters, that have left the Torah, yes. to do what they think is acceptable in their own eyes, Yisrael. Right. I have heard from this one, from that one. Oh, you should just forgive them. For what? I have nothing to forgive them That's of. Right. Yeah. That's right. They have trespassed Almighty Yah. Yeah. I have nothing to forgive. For what? Have they brought an offering? Has there been an apology? Has there been an offering that is acceptable? That has been brought forth. What do I have? Yisrael. Yes. Yes, right, yeah. You know, I was talking with a man that we have dealt, done business with for quite some time, for some years. We still stay in contact. We talk. We meet. We talk. And he mentioned about a man. How, how was he that used to be here? I said, I you know, I don't care. Who, I don't know what he's doing. I know he's not walking after the Torah. Yeah. You know, he made a statement. And I did not hold my tongue. He said, you know, you have to forgive those that, you know, people do things and, and they make mistakes. I said, I said, listen, that's a totally different affair, a mistake. I did not know. Sure. I did not understand. I, was, I did not have the knowledge of that. But when one has the knowledge and the understanding and he strategically makes a plan, an assault against one, yeah. that is not a mistake, my friend. So, no, I do not forgive. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Should we forgive those Israel? That's right. They have not brought forth the offering that is acceptable. Yeah. Well, I'm going to see what Torah says. Yeah. 470 times? Okay, if I believe maybe just seven, that should be enough. Hallelujah. I told you all for the mercies of Yahshua Hamashiach. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who should we forgive? Who are those that trespass against us that we should forgive? Yes. And it's important the offering, Yisrael. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's get back to that, Matitia. If you will with me, Matitia chapter 17, verse 24. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's back up a little from chapter 18. Hallelujah. Todi Afi Yashu Hamashiach. For without him, there would be no offering. There would be no deliverance, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. We, have, we would have died or we would die in our sins. Yeah. Yeah. Seeking the penalty that is just for transgressing the Torah. Hallelujah. It says here in Matthew chapter 17, verse 24. Yeah. And when they will come to Capernaum, they that receive tribute, taxes, there was a lot an amount that was owed to those that entered into the city, the place, though that may not have been uh, um, citizens, if I may use that term, yeah. of the city, of the town, there was tribute that had to be made. Even to the unjustness of those that collected the taxes, those that may have paid their old double three times, it was many times a, a very wicked thing. Not that they all done wickedly. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But there was one of the 12 that was also a tax collector. Mm -hmm. I will get to that, Israel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. They collected taxes. Yeah. But they received tribute money, 
came to Kepha and said, does not your rabbi, your teacher, does he not pay tribute? Does he not pay taxes? Does he just walk any place and doesn't uh, understand the laws? He understood the laws. He, understood, he knew. Come on, Yisrael, y'all. And it goes on and says in verse 25, he says, yes. And then he was come into the house, Yahshua Messiah. He prevented him, saying, what think you, Simeon? Whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute or taxes or this money? Of their own children or of strangers? Hallelujah. Bless you, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you. You know, there's a, a tax that we owe, Israel. We cannot pay. You know, we owe our lives to Yahshua HaMashiach, to Yah. He has made us, and we think we, we, just, we just don't give a damn, Israel. That he cares for such a people as us. We transpass, we sin continuously against Almighty Yah without thought. And we think the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh that, has, that he has made that's coming, Israel. Yah. That is here in his Torah. We think we just can do anything and be acceptable unto Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Torah. And he prevented him saying, what think you, Simeon? Of whom did the kings of the Olam take their tribute or customs? Of their own children or of strangers? And Kephah, he says to him, of strangers, of course. And Yahshua says unto him, then are the children free. Don't you know we, are, we have been set free, Israel? Yeah. We have been made free by the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Notwithstanding in verse 27, notwithstanding, lest we would have offended them. Go you to the sea and cast a hook and take up the Fish that come first, and when you have opened his mouth, you shall find a piece of money. That take and give them for you and for me. That's all right. He took such a, a mighty act, the things that go and cast out a fish, a hook. You know, there's so much even to that, Israel. Yeah, Hallelujah. Don't you know that we... Yah has made a cast, so he had cast for us, Yisrael, Yah. Yeah. You know, they'll make a statement, you know, to a, 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 a man that has a woman that is somewhat beautiful and pretty. They say, you have cast out the hook and pulled in a big fish or a nice fish. Yeah. Or they will brag according to their, their possession and what they have and use that statement. But yet, Almighty Yahweh has done something so beautiful for us, Yisrael, Yah. That out of so many, he has chosen a, a people that has been elected to have a treasure. Yes, yes. A most beautiful thing that just everyone does not have. Just every fish of that seed where he cast did not have that jewel or that thing that was, was sufficient. That he may pay the tribute, Israel. Yeah. Not everyone has the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yah. Not everyone is anointed of Almighty Yah, Yisrael Yah. But yet he has chosen us out of the old land, out of the, the, the remnant of the people of the nations to be a peculiar people unto him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That we may possess the Ruach HaKodesh of Almighty Yah with this treasure. So he caught this fish with this piece of money and he said, take of it and give it to the taxpayer for you and for me. Chapter 18, verse 1, as I continue in this, Yisrael, right. what is the offering? Did he not have to pay what was due, yeah. the tax? Yeah. Well, is he not just in all things? Do you think he did not understand what was due, Yisrael? He understood before time. Hallelujah. And he did that which was right, that which was acceptable. So in verse, chapter 18, as we continue, verse 1, at the same time, 
the discipline of the disciples unto Yahshua HaMashiach, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom? The Melhut, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. And Yahshua, he called a little child unto him. Hallelujah, the little children. And Yahshua said, truly I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of the Shemayim. One attribute as I observe, as I look at children, as we observe children, they may get, a, get in a spit or a disagreement, and it doesn't even have to get resolved. They forget about it. And they're just as Strong friends as the word before the altercation. And what happened before has no relevance. Right. They, they, as a matter of fact, they don't even remember. Right. It's over and it's dealt with. Why can't we just be like that, Yisrael? Why are we so offended by this and, and by that, Yisrael? Come on. A hope, Akim, Ish, Isha, all in the same. But at least little things. And yet we, we hold grudges and, and we, we hold things. And, it, and it's not to the hurt of the one, right. but it's to your own hurt. Right. Hallelujah. Sometimes we bring up things that should not even be brought up. That was, that's, that's long been forgot about. You don't even remember. Well, uh, come on, babe. What are you? Okay. All right. I'm sorry. We bring up things. Come on, Israel. Come on. I've done that. Come on. Come on, let's get mature here. Come on, we dig back, we look back, we search, we try to find, ah, okay. We try to find our artillery in a disagreement in a, uh, and, and, and when we fight, when we don't get along. Let's just be honest in here. We reach back in our artillery, we pull out something that's sufficient. Come on, that's immature. That's not what Kefa, that's not what he was talking about. Come on, Yisrael, y'all. But it's a very serious offense when we cross the line. When we do not obey what Torah instructs us to do. Hallelujah. There must be an offering. Does the reproof come? Yes, the reproof comes. Is it just? Yes, it is just. And should there be meat? Should there not be an offering that is suitable? To bring, we, if we look back at Torah concerning even the sin offering, the Kohen could just not bring anything and offer it upon the altar unto Almighty Yah. It had to be what was sufficient for the sin or sufficient for the congregation. Hallelujah. Or he would be found accountable. He was the one that was placed or called to be accounted of the trespasses of Yisrael. Just as Yahshua HaMashiach, was it not? He, he, he was accountable. He made himself accountable. He was the offering that was given unto us by Almighty Yahweh. Yah provided an offering in Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah, he took the responsibility for us all, Yisrael. One time. Hallelujah. So the same responsibility is given unto us, Ark, unto us, Ish, that as being leaders of our house, that we partake unto the responsibilities, that we bring the offering that is sufficient before Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because we are the gatekeepers of our homes, of the congregation. So should we deal with circumstances as they arise? Yes. They must be dealt with. And should we provide the offering as being Zakain, our king? Yes, there must be an offering. Yahweh requires an offering when the Torah has been trespassed or we have walked out of the way, Yisrael. Let me continue here. Hallelujah. And he called unto the child, unto him, and said, set him in the midst of the people that they may see in the midst of the twelve, in the midst of his discipline once. And said, truly I say unto you, except you be converted, except you be changed, except you throw away and cast off the hardened heart and the thoughts that you have. You think you mature in your own conceit that you understand Torah. 
You miss the innocency that is required. He says, except you become converted and become as this little child, you shall not enter the Melkut, the king of the Shemaim. We think we can just walk in, do we not? We think we can just enter into the presence of Almighty Yahweh and not bring an offering that is accepted. We have sinned, we have fallen short. We come into the buyer, into the courts of Almighty Yahweh in his presence without any type of praise. We don't open our lips. We don't lift up our voices. We don't lift up our hands, Israel. We have no, if I may use respect for the Bayat Yisra'ya. We bring no offering, Yisra'ya. Every time we enter into the gates of Jerusalem, every time we enter into the Bayat, we should bring an offering, Yisra'ya. You know, there's times that I come in, I may, I may check the fire, I may come in, turn off the light, I might just, I might just come in. But it's always with the offering. I give to that when I walk through those, those doors. To the hallelujah. There have, to, there have to be no one here. But it's the buyer. It's the house. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, you will know why I've entered the Melchut, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh, verse 4. Whoso therefore shall humble himself yeah. as this little child, as this babe, the same is the greatest in the Melchut or the kingdom of the Shemaiah. Little children, we observe them. Hallelujah. We see how they do. My children, they remind me of me. When I spank one, I always think about me. Hallelujah. My discipline one, it always calls me to think and to ponder what Torah says. How does y'all deal with me? Is he just when he deals with me? Is he merciful when he deals with me? Hallelujah. Have I brought the offering that is acceptable before Almighty Yah? Hallelujah. Verse 5, who shall receive one such as this little child in my name, and my Hashem, he receives me. That's what he said. Hallelujah. That locks us out right there, Yisrael. Yeah. We don't receive the simplicity of the Torah mm-hmm. as we should. Yeah. Yeah. The children, Beautiful. the small things, Yisrael. Yeah. You know, if we're not astute in the small things, then how are we going to handle the great things of Almighty Yah? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But who said, who receives such a child in my name? Yes. He receives me. But who shall offend one of these little ones? Yes. Yes. And not just offend this little one. Hallelujah. But who shall offend this little one which believes, which trusts? As that little one sat before Yahshua HaMashiach, he had all confidence. Mm -hmm. Even not understanding who this man was. Yet there was confidence. He believed. He trusted as he set him up on that high pedestal that he was okay. That he would not fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, the little ones that trust in me, that believe in me. They have confidence in me. That's what he said. He said, but who shall offend one of these little ones which have confidence in me? Hatha. It would be better if there were for him a millstone. That's what he says. Hung round about his neck. You know, it really don't take much to hold a man down in water. That's all right. It really doesn't. 50 pounds. A hundred pounds, that's, that's more than enough. Especially one that cannot swim. But we're talking about a millstone. Uh, I understand they can be small. We got a, one in the kitchen that's very small. Maybe, I don't know, maybe the stone in there might be six, eight inches in diameter. But there are millstones that are so massive. You wonder how, how one without the machinery is able to carry such a millstone. Thousands of pounds. Really 10, 12 feet in diameter. Really Millstone is used to crush the wheat, remove the husk, yeah. grind it, the powder. Yeah. So it can be used for bread, Israel. Yeah. Crush corn. So yeah. it can be used. Yeah. That's what the millstone is. 
He said, it'd be better that it be hung around the neck of this one that offend one of these little babies, little children that trust in me. That it were drawn, about, and he was drawn or thrown into the depths of the sea. It's better that thing be tied around his neck and he was thrown into the depths of the sea. It says that who the world because, woe unto the world because of offenses. He said, woe unto the world because of offenses. There are always going to be, or though in the world, there's always offenses, Israel. Yes, always oh, offenses. Sure we should not be downtrodden or cast down because oh, the world has offenses, Israel. Yes. The world are full of offenses. Sure he says, woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must be, he says here, it must be that offenses come. We are the children of Israel. We are the babe of Almighty Yahweh. And the world, they continue to offend, do they not, Israel? It is better than a millstone be cast around the necks. Their judgment shall, be, shall come to pass. It should not even trouble us, Yisrael. Their bed has already been made. So should we worry about because of the offenses of the world that they come, Israel? But he makes this, say, this statement here. And it caused me to ponder. It caused me to think. Because we must understand the time, even at this time where Yahshua makes this statement. In his preparation, even for to be impaled on the state of Israel. So he somewhat turns it all around right here. He says here, but woe unto that man. It was specific. He didn't say unto men, unto man, but he said that man. Hallelujah. Woe unto that man. By whom the offense comes. He knew that our offenses, the offenses of the world, even his impalement on the state, Israel, mm -hmm. was soon to come. He knew his fate. He knew what was before him. Yes. So he said, woe unto that man. Why? Because he knew that he is the offering. He was the offering at that time, Israel. Sure he so he said that offense, they're going to come. Aren't you glad that Israel, that he took upon yes. his back, upon his body, our offense unto Almighty Yah? He said, woe unto the man where offense come. When we offend Yah, day after day and time after time, woe unto us. Yes, right, Yah. Hallelujah. For without an offering, we will not be able to come into the presence of Almighty Yahweh. So he said, woe unto him that those offenses come. In verse 8. Did he forgive us, Yes, right, Yah? Were we not forgiven? Did he not wipe our sins or separate them far from his mind as far as the east is from the west, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we should do that one unto another, Yisrael. Yeah. Especially when one brings forth the offering. Yeah. That is key, Yisrael, yeah. the offering. What offering should we bring, Yisrael? Yeah. The offering of praises, the offering of Todah yeah. unto Almighty Yah. Yeah. Repentance. With a sincere lab. It's more than just the tears, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Look at Esau. Mm -hmm. He sought it carefully. Yeah. And there was no, no, no forgiveness. It so it's going to take more than just the tears. He done something that could not be forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us not trample our birthright. Yahweh, Yahshua, HaMashiach, what he has done has given us a right unto the Melkut, the kingdom, the riches of all things, the riches of, that are in Torah, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Should we trap the Dhamma, Yahshua, under our feet, the blood, Yisrael? Yeah. Our Zabak, yes. made in full. Sure. Hallelujah. The offering is very, very important, Yisrael. Yeah. So he says this. Therefore, if your hand or your foot offend you, talking about the body, hallelujah. There's those that has been birthed in our homes, our houses, our families, that have turned their back off on Maria. 
But we think that it's appropriate just to forgive and forget. Hallelujah. When they knowingly understood the Torah, heard the Torah, walked in the Torah, and turned their backs, Israel. The offering of Yahshua, they said the offering of Yahshua was not fit. It was not sufficient. But we think we should just forgive. I forget. That's all right. You don't, you, you, you curse Yah to his face. That's okay. I forgive you. No. It doesn't work that way, Yisrael Yah. They have trampled the offering of Yahshua HaMashiach. First of all, our offering have not been brought. It's more than just an apology. I'm sorry, Yisrael Yah. You know, we have been taught just to let every and everything, any and everything go, Yisrael Yah. That's not how Yahweh looks at it. So should we look at it any less than Almighty Yahweh? Oh, but that's my son. That's my daughter. That's my brother. That's my sister. That's my cousin. I forgive him. He, 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 he's all right. No, he's not all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me move on. We must cut them off. That's what this says. Better if your hand or your foot offend you, cut it off and cast it from you. You know, we have not cut off those things that offend Almighty Yah. And we have not cast them away, Israel. We hold them first and foremost in our hearts and our minds. We put them before Almighty Yahweh. We sweep the Torah of Yahweh under the carpet. He said, cut them off. Cut it off. Those things. That's what I'm talking about the offense this evening, Israel. Zakane and I were somewhat talking about that. Seventy times seven. Should we forgive? Hallelujah. Kepha said 70 times, Yahshua said nay. Yes. 70 times 7. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Who are those that we should forgive? Yes. Who are the ark? Who are the ones that he was talking about? Yes. Those that walk after the Torah, that fall, that may come short. Yes. He's not talking about those that curse Yah to his yes. face. Right. He says cut off the offenses. Yes. Let them go. Yes. Give them unto hell. If Yahweh seen fit, maybe yes. it takes him to bring him back into the fold. Yes. Only Yah adds unto his house and he takes away Yisrael. Yes. He said, therefore, if your hand offend you, cut it off and cast them. Yes. He didn't say it. Mm -hmm. We must understand what he was talking about here. He was not just saying, oh, my hand hurts, cast it and throw it off. It was deeper than that. Many times, you know, and I have observed this, Yisraya, the elders, the Zakane of the old times. Yeah. And I brought Yahweh for the things and the teachings that we have learned here. Yeah. It has been the things of the surfaces that have been taught throughout the generations. Mm -hmm. And what we call so many times the church, the bayat of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. And then I, I see so many times, even in these last days, that we are able to extrapolate and, and find... The things that are deeper than what are just in the mere words. Yes, that's, I like the fish being caught by the hook mm -hmm. with the, the gold. Or the forgiveness of so many, or, or, or the, 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 so many people being fed in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. their, their feet were not, we talked about that, we explained that. Their feet did not wear off of their, I mean their shoes did not wear off their feet. Their clothing were not tattered, even after all those years. But yet there is something that is so much deeper than just that, Yisraya. Hallelujah. Yeah. That we're able to grasp and dig deeper. Higher heights and deeper depths. Wasn't that not the old condition? They've said it all the time. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Therefore, if your hand offend you, cut it off. Cast them from you. For it is better for you to go into the eternal life or to the high of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Halt or main. Rather than having two hands yes, yes. or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. You know, we allow those things, those that offend, we hold on to them. Yes. And don't you know that it's going to cause you to miss the mark? Yes, will. It's going to cause you to walk after the way, mm -hmm. to sin before Almighty Yahweh, yes. to transgress His Torah. Yes. You're going to have to cut them off. Yes. Cut them off, Yisrael. Yes. Let it go. Hallelujah. You know, I'm not going to let anything separate me from the, the Ahava, the love that y'all, Almighty Yahweh, has set. So I'm not going to allow my brothers, my sister, children, Ish, Isha, 
We have to be able to say that each and every one of us should be able to say that with the utmost confidence. Hallelujah. What we call friends or who we see out in the world, things, riches, wealth, it don't mean anything. Hallelujah. He said, for it is better to enter into the milk of the kingdom of Yahweh without a hand, without a mean, and be maimed, limping. But you know that all things shall be restored? Ten times, Israel. So we're not losing anything in this old land. We, we're not giving up anything when it comes to the kingdom, our reward. Hallelujah. As long as we walk according to the Torah. He says also, for if your eye offend you, pluck it out. What we see, what we observe, Israel. If it offends us, he said to pluck it out. And cast it from you. For it is better for you to enter to life with one eye. Hallelujah. We should have the singleness of eye, Israel. We cannot have one eye focused on the world. Oh, my son, what he's doing. I'm praying for him. I'm trying to, I want him to do right. My father, he doesn't know the Torah. I tried to express it unto him. He cast me off. He don't want to hear it, but I keep trying. You're wasting your time, Israel. You should not cast your pearls, those precious things that Yah has given unto you, yeah. unto the swine. Yes. For in the last days, those that have ear to hear, they're going to hear yes, the will. wonderful message. Yeah. You're not going to make anyone serve right. Israel. That is the truth. It's only time for you to examine yourself. Get yourself right. Yeah. They, they don't see even what, what you have as being paramount. Or worth it compared to what they're doing. It's time for us to move up, Israel. It's time for us to step up the ladder. We must step up. Like they say, we must step up our game, Israel. Hallelujah. In the NBA, each team somewhat can gauge their opponents during the game. There's fears. I can't name to you all the different teammates and you know those that. Can rat them off. I'm lost. This, yes, I don't know the the players, but I understand the somewhat the game yeah. and what it takes. Yeah. There's intimidation out there on the court, sure but they don't let that overwhelm them. Mm -hmm. Team winning five games in a row, mm -hmm. and your team's up next. Man, you got to put it to it. You got to yeah. give it all. And even if you do not win, then you know you put forth the effort. You'll get more talk because they know that team, but they really put it down. Hallelujah. It's time for us to step up, Israel. You know, we have everything Yahweh intends for us to win every battle. We should not lose a one. Hallelujah. We should be a people that are renowned, that are known. That when the nations, they look at us, they want to come up against us in their... As they, it was said at one story, they're, they're afeared. They're afraid. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah to even try or even question Israel. So it's time to step up. It's time to lay down every weight, the sin that so easily sets us aside out of this path, this direct. We must cut it off, Israel. For it is better to go into high and to life everlasting with one eye than... Having two eyes and being cast into the Shemayim, we must have the singleness of eye. I, I recall Bishop Banks, as I came, talking about that many a times. We cannot have two eyes. We must have singleness of eye. The thing that is in our sight, what we see, should be always Yahshua. It should be the things of Almighty Yahweh. It should be the Torah and the Torah alone. How we could better ourselves to walk according to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Singleness of eye. We can't, we can't look at the world at the same time, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because that's going to throw us off of the path. We must have the singleness of eye. So look, cast off that eye. Cut off that foot. Cut off that hand. Hallelujah. For it is better to enter into the kingdom crippled. Hallelujah. Told you, Then to go to hell and to everlasting fire, separated from Almighty Yah. Hope. Continuing, Israel. Hallelujah. 
verse 10. He says to take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. Yes. Don't you see how Yahweh brought that in collectively, Israel? Yeah. Even understanding that we are his children. Yes. He would give nations, he would give cities for us. In the world there are offenses, but they shall receive our, their just reward. So we should, not re we should not offend. We should not do the things to offend one another, Israel. Yeah. If we walk according to the Torah, then any of us should not be offended. You see one coming short, falling short, walking out of the way. Yeah. You instruct, you correct, you rebuke. Yeah. There should be tough tidings that should be given to the one. Thank you, Op. Yeah. I didn't see that coming. I did not know. Yeah. Not to be offended, Israel. We should not be offended of one another when truth is spoken. Yeah. Hallelujah. We must get rid of the sin, Israel. We must get rid of those things that offend Almighty Yah. We must walk according to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. I'm not going to finish this today, Israel. Hallelujah. It says here, Take heed that you despise not one of these bane, these children, these little ones. For I say unto you that the kingdom of the Shemayim, that in the Shemayim, the Melach, they do always behold the face of my Abba that is in the Shemayim. For the Son of Man has come to deliver that which was lost. He said the Malak, their attention are always upon Almighty Yah. Everything they do is unto Almighty Yahweh. But I have been sent. I have come here to save that which was lost from the from the kingdom, from the Melhut Yisra'ya. Continually, verse, chapter 18, verse 12. He said, how think you then, if a man have 100 sheep, and I did read this on my last teaching, not this past teaching, but before concerning even the sheep, Yisra'ya, the bame, the children. But concerning this, how do you think if a man have 100 sheep, that one of them be gone astray? Does he not leave the ninety and nine and goes into the mountains and seek to find that which has gone astray? Does he not do that, Israel? Yeah? There are times that we do walk after the walk off of the beating path, but uh, by the mercies of Almighty Yahweh, He goes after us. He seeks us. The rebuke comes. The reproof comes. He seeks us, Israel. Yeah? Many times we look at that as Yahweh pushing us away. We're so foolish as a people. But it's to bring us near unto him. To bring us into his bosom, Israel. Don't you want to be close unto Almighty Yah? I want to get closer. I'm not close enough. Oh, draw us nearer. Draw me nearer, Almighty Yah, by your judgment. Come for Israel. Verse 13. And if it so be that he find it, the one, truly I say to you, he rejoices more over that one sheep than the ninety and nine which have gone astray. That one that have gone astray have, was the one that has offended, mm -hmm. had walked out of the path. All the other sheep are doing their responsibility, walking according to the path, but seem to be that only one. I was that one. Yeah. I am this one right here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's all right. If you don't want to claim to be the lost sheep, I'm the lost sheep. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I have offended. I have brought an offense before Almighty Yah. But yet our tough shepherd, Yahshua Hamashiach, he reached way down into that pit, into the thickets, into the briars, and he retrieved me, Yisra'ya. He has retrieved us, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. So don't you know that the, the shepherd, that was not an easy task to retrieve. It took work. Don't you know, I, I know in the woods, when I go through the woods, or even when we're working, we lose a tool, maybe up in a tree, mm -hmm. dropping it to the thickets. Man, we need that, uh. And you get scratched up and, and hurt sometimes doing this, that type of work. But you have to retrieve. You have to get it. Sometimes we may climb a tree 60, 65 feet tall, and that's, that's small game compared to us, what we've done. Is that not up? Uh? The climbing rope up there, and one of the things I always tell her, I'll make sure when we pull the rope down 
Ask you this for me, Op. We lost it out. What do we do? And what else? Take the clip off and take the knot out. Why? Because when you pull that rope with that clip after I have come down or one of us come down out of that tree, it's going to get stuck. And we have to get back in that another 60, 65, 70 feet to retrieve it. And sometimes I tell my, you know what, uh, who, who, you know who's going to get that rope, right? And they think it's me. But I tell them, I say, now you're going to go get it. Now, I, I go get the rope. It's just, I do that just so we, we be reminded. Yeah. Take it out. Right. And then they see me have to climb back up the tree without my rope with just spikes. Yeah. They say, I don't want to do that to the Zakane again. Wow, Hallelujah. I feel the same way about you, Og. I don't want to do things that makes it hard for you. Yeah. I want to make it as simple as possible. Yeah. Hallelujah. But yet the effort for the one to go and to retrieve that. His effort on the stake is right, y'all. He was beaten. He took the shame, the ridicule. And he did not despise it at all. He did it for us, Israel. Hallelujah. An offering. He paid a debt that we could not pay, that we could never pay. You and I collectively, this whole house, but through Yahshua HaMashiach, the Lamb, the offering sufficed the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. He looked down and said, okay, that's all right. Hallelujah. It was sufficient. The dom is sufficient, Israel. Don't ever think the dom is not sufficient. The dom is sufficient for you today. Hallelujah. Let us continue to walk after the things that please Almighty Yahweh. Let us continue to strive and to fight this battle, to endure and to work out our salvation with fear and with trembling with Israel. Hallelujah. So he went back and he rejoices after that one sheep, then the 99, which did not go astray. Verse 14. Even so, it is not the will of your Abba, Almighty Yahweh, that is in Shemayim, that one of these little ones, these bane, the children, let us not discourage our children, that they should perish or go astray. Moreover, if your, aunt, if your brother shall trespass against you, he says here, Go and tell him of his fault yes, that's what you do. between you and him. That's right. But we don't do that. No, we, we go don't. and we tell it to someone else that's and then to someone else. Right. And before you know it, it's a mess. And the ark is like, come on. what are you? I didn't right. know my ark. Yes. Did that offend you? Yes. Well, we should go to the one. That's the truth. You know, if we can't do that. That just shows that we're cowards just right, y'all. The Torah says this. So if we trespass the Torah and we do not do this after we have received the knowledge, then what about the judgment upon you? Because believe me, just as sure, you're going to offend. You're going to offend. That's why it's so important for us in the last days at any time that we do what Torah expressed. And I told the Yahweh for Zakain. For Ray that have taught us and have taught us that, teaches us that, and abides by it and does it, Israel. We have an example, and we have no excuse, Israel. Hallelujah. He said, You go and you tell him his fault between you and him, it says alone. And if he shall hear you, we don't want to hear. We don't want to shamak. Yahshua Hamashiach, the Torah. Instructs us daily. We don't want to show up. We don't want to take heed. Yes. And if he shall hear you, you have gained the ark. Yes. You have gained the brother. The bond is even stronger. Yes. I will be extra careful next time. Uh, I won't do that. I don't want to offend my ark. I don't want to transgress the Torah. That is what the offense is talking about, the Torah, Israel. Yes, right, yeah. I mean, if we, if we take it to the offense, what we think are offenses, they will be offended all day long. The world is full of offenses. Offenses are going to come, Israel. But let us walk after the Torah. Hallelujah. It solves everything. It solves everything, anything. Before it even comes, it's already solved. It's already dealt with as long as we walk according to the Torah. So you do that. Step number one. Verse 16, 
But if he does not hear, if he does not show mark, if the trespass of that iniquity after he has walked after the path of Torah, it says here, but if he will not hear you, then you take with you one or two more witnesses. But we must understand what the witnesses are and who they are and what they represent. And we have been taught that, Yisrael, yeah. those that have a knowledge of Torah, that have a slate, if I may use that term, that is clean, yeah. that walks certain speck to the judgment, yeah. that they are able and capable. Yeah. And not only that, they meet the requirements to be a witness. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are all types of witnesses out there. You can pay a witness. You can pay a lie. You got enough money. They get on the stand against a man that is innocent. And the man is judged for a crime he did not commit. Unjust. The system is unjust. This world is unjust. It is full of offenses, Israel. But if we are walk according to the Torah, to according to the law of Almighty Yahweh, then we will resolve those. But this is talking about one that has been gone to the second time. Hallelujah. But if he will not hear you, take to you two or three more. And in the mouth of those two or three witnesses, he says, let every word be established. Let every word may be established. If he refuses, acts out of the character of Yahshua HaMashiach, after the first time, the second time, you have your witnesses. They judge. All right. Okay. It is dealt with. Verse 17. And if he neglect to hear from them, he said to tell it through the congregation. Now that's one of the, I might say, next to the most drastic measures that it takes. Torah instructs us to do that. And I have seen that done. Hallelujah. Take it and tell it to the congregation. And again. And if he neglect... If he does not hear, this isn't about neglect. This is about not shumaki. This is about not having so much pride. And he cannot condescend and say that he had walked after or outside of the Torah and have fallen short of the instruction of Almighty Yahweh. These are men that are capable, that are able. The judgment is not wrong. All right, uh, that's not right. And he does not listen. This is the final judgment. To the congregation, let him be to you as a heathen. Because he does not walk in Torah. He doesn't know what Torah says. Cast him out. He's a heathen. But one thing that caught my attention, though, even though I read that, and I'm going to go ahead and get, get into this, and I know it's somewhat, it's not out of what is being taught today, Israel, but I'm going to deal with that because it has a great part in what I'm expressing today. He said, let him be as unto you a heathen and a Republican. Now, how many of us recall me talking about the publican, the tax collector? Amongst Israel, amongst not only the nation of Israel, but amongst the people to go in the nation, the tax collector is one of the most despised persons or people or, or the agencies that collected the, collected the monies for the king. They were despised. So he, let, he said, let that out be as the heathen and as a publican. Was not one of the twelve a publican? A tax collector. All right, let us go into that just for a moment here, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Because they're despised, they're rejected of the people. They're those that work in that institute just as in the institute that is established in the United States, these taxes, the unjust taxes, the revenues. It is all an unjust system. Sure is. So they were hated at this time amongst the people. Not just Yisrael, but the Goyim. Yes. If you want to turn me to Metithia chapter 10, verse 1, I want to begin reading. Talking about the publican. The one that collected the taxes or the debt. He collected the debt. He collected that which was owed. And many times more than what was necessary. Hallelujah. It says here, Metithia chapter 10, verse 1, 
And when he had called to him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against the unclean spirits, the Ruach. All 12 of them. Even the one in the latter time that disgraced or turned his back on Yahshua HaMashiach. He gave them all the gifts to men. Twelve disciples disciplined. He gave them power against unclean Ruach spirits. To cast them out, he gave them the power to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. It says all of them, Yisrael. And their name, the names of the twelve apostles were these, the first Simeon, who was called Kepha, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, Yochanan, his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Timothia, and Matithia, Matthew, the Republican. Yes. Matithia was a Republican, a tax collector. Yes. That was his job. That was his association. He understood that. Hallelujah. Just for us to understand and to know, talking about the publican, but yet he was one of the twelve. Does Yah discount the publican? Does he judge the publican unrighteously? It does not, it does not a place for a publican, a tax collector. Can he be just? Sure he can be just. Hallelujah. Lucas chapter 5. Just so we know, Yisrael, Yah, publican. Lucas chapter 5, verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the words of Yah, Yahshua, of Yahweh, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Gennesaret. And he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen, they were gone out of them and were washing the nets. We're talking about Yisrael, the offering. What offering should we bring That's right. before Almighty Yah? What debt do we owe? Yes. Yes. He has sent Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. He has provided us with more than we ever need. Yeah. We call the woman with the meal barrel, with the the oil that was running out, yes. but yet the oil never ran out and she never lost a meal. Yes. We call all those types of teaching and stories, do we not, Israel? What we call stories. Been taught to us in Christendom or whatever, what have you, but never really understanding the essence of what, that, what was being taught, just as what has been taught even concerning the forgiveness and who should we forgive and how many times. So we should give total unto Yahweh for all things. Verse 3. Lucas chapter 5, verse 3, as we move on. And he entered into the ships, which was Simeon's, and he prayed to him that he would thrust out a little from the land. They didn't move their ships a little bit from the land. Fishing or was not going well at this time. They were disappointed. They was tired. They was weary. And he sat down that he and taught the people out of the ship. Yes. Those that have followed, you must remember there was an enormous amount of people that followed him, sure were after him for his works, sure. more so for his actions yes, sir. than for the message. That's the now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simeon to launch out into the deep part of the waters and let down your nets yes. for a draw. And that is the simply just to let them down, gentle motion, and to move about. Yes. And Simeon answered unto him, Master, we have trolled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let the net down. So he was letting them know, Yahshua HaMashiach, he didn't, he, he didn't know who he was talking to. Amen. Hallelujah. Sure Even at this, Israel, Amen. we must let down our nets. We must let go, Yisrael. We've been searching. We've been trying to find the abundance of the riches of the Melchut of the kingdom and looked in all of the wrong places, Yisrael. Yes, instead of looking unto Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes, so they labor all night.
to fish, to bring some resource. Verse 6. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish. Just have to obey Israel, y'all. Any circumstance, situation, no matter how we struggle, how we have tried, all we have to do is to obey the Torah. Obey what Yahshua HaMashiach speaks unto us. The simple message he had given us today for me, just to obey it. And he will give us when we cast our nets an abundance of the great wealth of the Melkut, the kingdom of Yah. So they enclosed a great multitude of fish. That their nets they broke. Can you imagine that, Israel? Yeah? Yes. The material that those nets were made of out of were not weak material. They have caught many fish before. But when they cast out their nets this time and obeyed Yahshua HaMashiach, the rewards of that was greater than they could bring in. That even it broke their nets. And they back it to their partners, to their comrades, the other ones, to help, which were in their ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and they filled both the ships that they began to sink. The riches, the wealth of Yah, all we have to do is to obey. Just a simple commandment. He didn't have to speak one word. He didn't have to tell Yahshua HaMashiach, I've been laboring, I'm tired, we're weary, we want to go home. All we have to do is just obey. All we have to do is obey, Israel. Yah. Let us not be weary in well-doing as we walk in the Torah. Let us not become faint-hearted because things aren't working out the way we think they should work out. But let us obey. Let us walk after the Torah of Abba Yahweh and we'll receive of the abundance of the Melkut in the kingdom, Israel. Yah. And when Kephah saw it, did he owe a debt unto Yahshua HaMashiach? See, it was greater than the fish and the amount of the fish. So Simeon Kepha, he saw it and he fell down at Yahshua HaMashiach. When was the last time we fell down on our knees, just right, y'all? When was the last time we presented an offering of praise and of Todah, crying out? Contrite before Almighty Yahweh, brokenhearted, and giving him Todah for all that he had done. Sometimes you have to throw out that old net, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah, just to see what Yahweh has done for you. Yeah. When Kephah saw he fell down at Yahshua's knees saying, Depart from me. Go away from me. Why? For I am a sinful man. Yeah. When was the last time we have said that, Yisrael? Yeah. I am sinful. Yeah. I'm a transgressor. I have transgressed the Torah. I have offended. I have fallen short. I have walked off of the path. I have not walked under the Torah. Was this not a rebuke unto him? Well, Yahshua did. Sure, that was a rebuke. Did he act accordingly and correctly as the Torah, as an offering? Sure, he did. This was an offering. This repentance, Yisrael. So he fell upon his knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Yahshua HaMashiach. For he was astonished. And all that were with him, and at the draught of the fish which they have taken, they were able to collect many Israel. And so was James and Yachahan, the sons of Zebedee, that were partners with Simeon. And Yahshua said unto him, Fear not, for henceforth you shall catch men. And when they had brought their ships into the land, they forsook all. Do we forsake all? Have we forsaken all? We believe that we possess so much and we have such a great responsibility in what we do. And it does not include Almighty Yah Yisrael. Yah. They forsook it all. The fish, the ships. They let the people have it, whoever wanted They forsook it all, Yisrael. Yah. And they followed Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. What are we following, Yisrael? Yah? Is it the... Is it the desire of our own heart? Is it the will of our own mind? Have we left all to follow him? Have we cast off that hand? Yes. Have we put out that other eye? Have we done what we should do, Yisrael? Yes. That we may follow the Torah, the midst of our Yahshua HaMashiach wholeheartedly. Yes. It says they were the signers for all that were with them. 
And Yahshua in verse 10 told him at the latter verse, the part of that verse, Simeon, fear not, for henceforth you shall catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed Yahshua HaMashiach. And, at, and it came to pass when he was in a certain city. This is going on concerning the Republican. He behold, I'm sorry, he behold a man full of leprosy. So we still talk about the offering on Almighty Yah. Yeah. He behold the man full of leprosy, who seeing Yahshua HaMashiach, he fell upon his face, and he sought him. He, be, he pleaded. He begged. Yes. Saying, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahshua, if you will, if you would, if it's in your desire and your tough pleasure, if you will, you can make me whole. You can make me clean. Hallelujah. We can, make, we can be made clean. We are made clean by Torah. We walk after the Torah of Yahshua HaMashiach. And he put forth his hand and he touched him saying, I will. Do we think Yahweh is not willing Israel? Yah, he is willing. It is his pleasure. He said he lost something that he has come to take back. Hallelujah. And I barak Yahweh for that. We are his treasure, Yisrael. Yah. So he reached out his hand and touched him and said, I will. He said, be you made clean. We must be made clean, Israel. Yah. We must cast out everything that is not of Almighty Yah. The sin, those things that, be, that so easily beset us aside out of the way. He said, be you made clean. And he said immediately, not after a space of time, but he says immediately, the leprosy departed from him. And he commanded him to tell no man. See, we want to tell everybody. We want to try to make them understand what Yahshua HaMashiach has done for us. But they're not going to understand this right now. He said, tell no man. But go and show yourself to the Kohen. Because they are the only ones that have the, the power. They have the authority. To say this man has leprosy yeah. and what has the, the measures that has to be taken to put him out of the camp. So he said, don't go tell everybody. Don't do that. Just You, you go straight to the Kohen. We need to go straight to Yahshua HaMashiach. We must confess our faults, Yisrael. Yeah. He, he, he confessed his faults. Yes. These disciples, they confessed their faults. Yes. They said we are sinful men. Yes. We are unclean men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Yahshua was able to deliver them, Yisrael. Yeah. From their bondages and from, from those things that kept them, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And he does the same. He is able, more than able, Yisrael, to do what is acceptable that we may be received unto Almighty Yahweh on this day. Hallelujah. He touched him and immediately the leprosy departed from him. He commanded him to go, don't tell no man, but the Kohen. And he says this, which is key, offer and offer your cleansing. What is that? The offering that is acceptable? Yes. Who must offer the offering that is acceptable? Yes. This leprosy was a type of an offense. It could not dwell amongst the congregation of Israel. Anyone with that type of disease, Israel, had to be put forth out of the camp. There was a place where the lepers went. They had to abide outside of the camp, Israel. But Yahshua HaMashiach, through him, were able to come into the body of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. We have come with leprosy and every kind of disease, Israel. Yah. Well, all we have to do is confess our sins and our faults before the throne of Almighty Yah. And we shall be forgiven and cleansed. It says immediately, Israel. Yah. But we must have the offering. So he offered, he said, offer your offering of cleansing according to that which as Moshe commanded for a testimony to them. Unto the priest, unto the Kohen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have so much more here, Israel. Lucas chapter 5, verse 15. Let us continue a few more verses. Then I will continue this teaching, Israel. 70 times 7. Kepha. He thought maybe 7 would be enough. Yahshua said, no, it takes more. It takes me. It takes the offering from Almighty Yahweh. It's not the number, but it's the offering, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. More than sufficient for the sins of Kol Yisrael. He says in verse 15, but so much more 
went there a fame abroad of Yahshua, and great multitudes came together to hear, and to be healed by him for their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness, and he prayed. Hallelujah. Let me move on to this, Israel, as I bring this to a close. I will continue this. Hallelujah. Let me somewhat bring this to a close on this Shabbat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh has given us this day to rest in this Torah, meditate unto what we have been fed today. My nephesh has been fed today. Hallelujah. Yah. Tell you what, let me just read this in Lucas. Luke. A few verses here, Yisrael. Does that bring this to a close just for now? Yes. Hallelujah. Lucas chapter 23, verse 32. Lucas 23, 32. We know as Yahshua HaMashiach, as his time came closer and closer to be impaled, to be offered as an offering, we must remember this is Yahweh's offering, Yahshua HaMashiach. Why? Because we could not pay the debt. We could not pay that which was due. We have been our offense. We are our offense unto Almighty Yahweh. We do not walk according to his Torah and his statutes. Yet there was two other men that was there on that great mountain. And one pleaded for the mercies. And Yahshua said unto him, you shall receive of the, the Hasid. Hallelujah, Yahweh. But it says here in 23, verse 32, that there were also two other male factors, other men, that was led with him to be put to death. And when they came to the place that was appointed, which was called Gagotha, this great mountain, he said where they were to be impaled, Yahshua, and the malefactor of the man that was there on the right hand and the other on the left hand. Then said Yahshua HaMashiach, Abba, he said to forgive them, for they know not what they do. They don't understand. They have not come to the knowledge or the understanding of the Torah. They have not come into that higher pinnacle yet, Almighty Yahweh. I am the offering. You have given me for the sins of Ko Yisraya, of the nations and the people, those that are scattered abroad. My body, my dom is sufficient. What well, he was saying here, Yisraya. So he said to forgive them, for they know not what they do. For they parted his garments, the heathen, those that was there. They saw some wealth in what he was wearing, seamless garments. The, the Torah cannot be parted, Yisraya. His word cannot be torn ashanda. It's all ikad, it's one. And the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them. It says that they derided him, saying, he delivered others. They just did not know that he delivered all. Let him deliver himself. And if he be Yahshua HaMashiach, the son of Almighty Yahweh, he said, if he be chosen of Almighty, let him deliver him. But they just didn't understand. We didn't understand, Yisrael, that it's by the will of Almighty Yahweh that he abided there on that state. Why? That he may be the complete and the total offering for the forgiveness of the whole house, the sins of Yisrael, scattered throughout the whole Olam. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, Yahweh Yisrael, stay encouraged. Let us be encouraged this day. This there's much more to this. Now, next time I'm here, we will go on, Yisrael. There's so much more to this. Seventy times seven. We have offended Almighty Yahweh. We have already exceeded that number. If it was to be said as a maximum, Yisrael. Hallelujah. But because of Yahshua HaMashiach, we are all forgiven. Hallelujah. Let us walk according to his statutes, according to his precepts and his commandments. You know, Zakane, another thing that he, he told me that was told to him, and I kind of I chuckled a little bit, and I was looking at that also. You know, the, the, the simplicity of the minds of, of a lot of men. You know, and I, I expressed this to Zakane 
you know, he, he said he heard that there's over 200 and something commandments. And I says, I came, I said, you know, in all honesty, there's more than that. I said, when y'all spoke the old lamb into existence, let there be light, that was a commandment. I said, but isn't a beautiful thing that y'all, even as Moshe came down from the mount, that Yahweh says, the ten. I said, let, let, us, let, us, let, us, work after, let us work after the ten, Zakeen. Don't worry about all that other stuff. We, we, we have not exceeded, we have not overcome these. Hallelujah. So let us abide in, thing, in, in this, in the Torah, in Yahshua HaMashiach. And then all those other things, it will be revealed unto us. Let's just worry about the ten, Yisrael. Hallelujah. They're very simple. Isn't that something as Moshe went up into the mount to receive commandment of Almighty Yahweh that everything just went to hell below the mount. When he came down, he had the commandments written in stone. I said, isn't that something that came before he was able to come down that it broke all ten? He cast them down. Filthy people. I said, that's, that's us, Zakeen. Hallelujah. So let's obey the ten, Yisrael. Yahweh, he will lead us. He will guide us. He has not set men before you that, that are, are wicked men, Yisrael. He set men before you that are wholeheartedly, that takes this seriously. Shepherds that will lead you into the promised land. And what is that, the promised land? That is the Torah, the Mishra, obeying what Yahweh has instructed us to do. Hallelujah. So let's stand to our feet, Yisrael. Let's enjoy this Shabbat, this precious time that Yah has set aside for his house. Hallelujah. To enjoy a testament. He has given it only unto Yisrael that we rest on this day. Not for the world to enjoy for, for us to enjoy, and we rest in Yahshua HaMashiach. Abba Yahweh, we told you for this beautiful day you have given us, this occasion, this gathering, the word you have spoken unto us this morning, Abba Yahweh, we rock you for that. You have fed us, Abba Yahweh, from the Shemayim today. We do ask, Abba Yahweh, that call all Yisrael that are scattered abroad, you continue to instruct and to strengthen our imuna in Yahshua HaMashiach, that we know if we will abide in your Torah, and stand on the sure foundation, your mitzvah, that you will carry us through any situation, Abba Yahweh, and we will not be defeated. We give you told out in all things, take those that have come from near and far, those that are listening by via live stream home safely, as we dismiss in Yahshua HaMashiach's precious name. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Yahweh! Shabbat Shalom, Yisrael Shabbat Shalom.